All right, pretty much completed the uh, ground ball now. This is the uh, the final posed product. Um, got some pretty epic lag because there's about almost 12 million polygons in this little scene I've built. Um, quite a similar uh, pedestal to um, the, this scrap that I did. So to torn down the grass and it's a bit cleaner and I put a skull in there so he's all beefed up on that. Made some pipes in uh, Maya. She's using stuff like uh, I was extruded a couple of uh, CV curves, you know, using the uh, the NURBS tools that are in there. But everything's painted up now. Uh, pretty happy with it. It looks pretty pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna do some renders now. Uh, I didn't film this before, but uh, first thing I need to do is to sort out these materials I've got on. I know that's skin shader. I'm just going to tone down the um, the spec. Specularity is you know how much white information uh, is on the uh, you know kind of like um, it's kind of like reflectivity but not. Um, it can give you some interesting results, but I just don't want it to be as it was on 14 before and it's a bit too sort of sticky looking. But that looks that looks okay. Just going to select this grass now. Put some basic material on that. Um, let's make sure I've got that selected. Turn that down. Um, we just fill that. But that's pretty much everything's looking how I want it to look. So I'm just going to do a test render with no um, sub pixels on. Just to see what I'm getting. Yeah, I think the skin looks okay. Metal looks like metal. I think for the metal, I put a bit of. Uh, I think it might be uh, this basic material too, because it's got a nice bit of specularity on there, just to give it that shiny. You just play around with the different modifiers in the. Uh, I think that's in yeah, the material window. Um, but that's pretty much what you're going to do for the first part, is just figure out what materials you want and what. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this skin. Ground looks fine. I'm not really too fussed about that, it's just background. Skull's okay, do not look too mental or anything. Uh, and I want to sort out these shadows, actually. So I'm just going to find the render tab. Just put it over here. And um, we want to go into render properties, got shadows on, I want some ambient inclusion. Um, don't want any of that fog. Flat layers, 3D shading. All I'm going to turn it on is just ambient occlusion. That's on by um, default. I'm just going to go to my shadows here, and I want to lower the resolution a little bit, bring up its blur, um, just so it's not as not as you know, not as harsh around here. I, don't, I just don't think super harsh shadows look very good. Um, Let's see what this gives us. I want there to be enough information in there for it to look like a shadow and look like it's casting, you know, the correct silhouette and stuff. But I think that just makes it look a little nicer, you know. Everything it's not super. Um, I don't know. I just looks a bit more natural, I guess. But you know, you can render your shadows how you like, really. But that's just a personal preference of mine. Um, okay. So now I've sorted with that, I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to go into my document here and make a large document. Let's bring it up to 3K. Uh, I'll do is press resize, it's going to get that warning. Use your buttons here to navigate because it's going to be bigger than your monitor. Uh, so yeah, it's going to get really laggy as well because it's having to do this massive draw size on this big document. But I found like just tap in 3k into it seems to be enough. Put it on an angle a little bit. And just find an angle that you like that works. I, I want to get a bit of tail in there as well. 
if you hold shift you can tumble as well like if you press um, shift and um, was it left mouse button to click you sort of like you know like you zoom but just hold shift instead of alt that looks okay actually I'm going to just pan it around a tiny little bit just so I can get a bit of that metal in that leg uh, yeah that looks pretty nice and for this first render I'm going to turn off the shadows um, and I'm also going to come to my light let's chuck this in over here and I'm just going to play around with this light in a little bit I'm going to go for some sort of sunny every day 0.95 let's just see um, what this is going to give us This is without any shadow information on because I'm going to composite the shadows in themselves. So last time I forgot to turn that off and it was sort of in my colour render, which is bad. Um, but let's check it out. I'll just press actual and it's going to zoom in for you all the way. Uh, just make sure the angles and everything are what you want them to be. Um, yeah, it looks okay. If you're happy with what's coming through, which I am, then I'll probably have to hand paint in that dot that I had on his eye to give it that shiny look, but that's no problem. can do that in Photoshop easily. Um, but right, I'm just going to zoom back out. And I'm going to put the sub picks up to two, so that's enough for what I want, you know, quality. Just, just sort of like, it's kind of like anti aliasing but. Uh, you'll see when you render this next one, uh, but I think that's fine. I'm just going to hit that render button again. It's take a bit longer the more you crank up the uh, the sub picks, but it's because I didn't actually turn the camera around or anything. It seems to have done that quite fast. Uh, but you can just see now uh, the quality of the grass has come up because it's you know doing all that. Uh, extra pixels and stuff, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, a cool feature I like about ZBrush to get your renders out quick if you just come to your here BPI render pass, uh, you get these little thumbnails. Um, and if you click them, it just brings up this export window, which is awesome. So now I can just make this new folder. I'm just going to call these renders, and I'm going to make a new folder here called front, and just press save. And I need the depth for doing um, lens blurs. I need the ambient occlusion, and I need the mask. And then I'm going to turn on shadows. And then I'm going to re-render that. I should have done this on the scrub. Um, just give me an extra, you know, extra flexibility. It's probably going to look a bit better now. It's got some shadows information in there, but uh, put the composite in. Things. You can never render out the final image from the actual program. Never ever think you can do that. Cause I remember when I first got into 3D art, and I saw these really beautiful renders, and I thought they had this like the settings, you know. But it's not. It's just loads of different renders composited. That's how they get the really nice, touchy images that you see. Um, you just can't do it. You just there's just no way of setting it up that good, you know. There's so much power you can get from Photoshop and you know 2D image editing. So it's just a matter of getting the correct images out of ZBrush in order to create this really nice image. But yeah, the shadows are nice, nice amount of contrast. I like that it's like it's halfway across his body. This uh, this arm is in shadow as well. This gives you like dynamicness, but. If you look here, you've got these shadows that we can now composite into the image that we got earlier on. So, put those shadows in there. Uh, and now we need to do a highlight pass, oh, some of the light information. And a good way to do that is uh, instead of using this, just hit this button here. Um, let me just go to my yes on preview. Let's go all the way down. 
until you get rid of all your polypaid information. And you should be left with this black and white image. Now, the good thing about this is that it gives you the ability to uh, play around with different materials. So I'm just going to get maybe my cut white and I'm going to bend on black. Oh, I can't use the uh, lighting card. Um, okay, I've got basic material. Uh, I'm going to crank that light up quite a bit. And I'm going to click it again so I can bring it around the back of here. And I'm just going to zoom in so I can see what I'm lighting. So I want a nice highlight. Let's go to the best material and bring up this ambient. It's not really doing anything, it's actually going to make this a bit grey. Yeah, that's a bit nicer. Make it a lighter grey. Thinking about this pipe. But I also want a nice amount of light information around his face. So. Uh, not too bad about the ground, probably won't even highlight that, so I'm just basically picking out the uh, the body at the minute. Like all oh, this stuff has been masked out in Photoshop, so but I think that's looking pretty nice. A bit around his arm as well. A nice amount around here. Uh, I'm just gonna try and push it around a little bit. Maybe a bit more vertical. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Alright. Again, I'm going to turn off shadows. Actually, I'm going to leave them on. As a highlight, would be affected by shadows, but we'll just see what it gives us. See how sort of dominating it can be. But it's a good idea to play around with different, you know, highlight shots, um, just in case some of them don't work. But usually I just like to keep it simple. As long as it has some form of highlight then, you know, it usually looks fine, so <sighs> right. I might actually keep the shadows on there, it looks fairly cool. Quite a dynamic highlight pass up. It's pretty accurate in terms of it being light on his head. And if I need to be, I can just um, duplicate the layer in Photoshop and mess around. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to go to my render shaded and we'll call this highlight 01. Um, so I'm going to play around with some more stuff. It's going to bring out some sort of specularity kind of thing. Just in case I want a bit more light and information, you know, like reflected colour and stuff like that. That'll do. And render that. And then you have to spin him around and do the same for a back view. The hardest thing about doing this is trying to match the lighting or a similar lighting kind of information for the back. Um, I sh nah, I was going to say I should have spun it around and had the highlight, but then I'd have lost the uh, the view. I think there was a way to lock the camera in ZBrush now, though, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Might have dreamt that. Let's <laughs> wait for him to render. But this is just for like that. Do you know when you can see sort of like a radiance about someone's skin? You know, like, because the skin absorbs light, so it's very complex in terms of how it's, you know, how it's rendered in real life, if you like. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out some different ways to make it more realistic skin. Just purely, I was going to call this, um, I'll call it bounce light. Okay, and, um, Right now, I can just spin him around. Uh, look 
for a decent back position. Trying to make sure I've got the same angle. Is this it? No, it's much more steeper. Do you know on the base, like that seems okay. Can't really see him. That looks okay. I'm gonna go with that. I'm actually gonna just turn on all my um, poly paint. Even gonna have to do it again. It's just it's hard to figure out what looks good when you're looking in black and white. So I'm flick it all on for the sake of what, like what, thirty seconds. I may as well make sure I'm getting a good render. Hmm. Rendering is quite fun though. I want to make sure you can see these the details that I've actually put on here. It's the hardest thing about adding all this detail is that you don't show it. I think that's pretty cool. That's a nice little. I like this bit here. You can see the uh, silver parts. Initial. I think that actually might be a bit too far. Maybe, yeah, that should do it. Um, right. So this time we have to light from like up here. Uh, I think we just want to be at point nine five, do we? For the non highlight. It was kind of like that. Hmm, can't really see that down there now. It has indeed blacked out those grills. Uh, we'll see we render it because it does compensate a little bit. Alright. I'm going to stop fretting. That's a bit better. Right, let's just render that. There's an awful bit on this model. There's a bit right underneath his uh, head, you know, around there on the back of his neck. It looks a bit naff. <laughs> it's probably an area that I neglected, but overall, I guess it looks okay. I think the triceps are a bit deflated, but yeah, I guess it'll do. It got warped a bit during the uh, posing process because. I uh, had to pose like each individual thing, you know, I didn't actually just pose one area. Um, just because of all the weird parts he had to him, so. So yeah, it's sort of twisted and warped him slightly. Like his uh, deltoid here is a bit fucked. Might change it up in Photoshop using liquid fire or something. If I can be bothered. I think most people won't even notice that. Yep, that's cool. Um, same again. Let's make sure you got all this. So I'm gonna go back one. I'm gonna create a new folder called back, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save out what I need. Yo, mask. And I'm gonna turn my shadows on and re-render. I have a time saving idea for Photoshop as well. Because before I avoided um compositing them at the same time because I need them to like overlay on top of each other like 
the exact thing so you can composite properly but I think I'm going to make like a document and just drop them both in side by side and make like yeah it just I can't even think about it before it's going to save me like 50% work and plus I'll get the exact same results so, so I was always like um, you know oh, I've got to do this again and you know I have to composite them both and try and match the lighting and stuff so it's stupid <laughs> Almost done. Yes, I was hoping that would shadow out that awful little bit that I forgot to do. It's amazing how shadows make something look so much better. Oh, I am gutted about these bits down here, how people are not going to see them. Yeah, they were like some sort of grills inside of his body. Oh, well, it's just the angle they're on, I guess. Might put a highlight down there or something so you can make out a hint. Get those shadows in there. All right, now I need to turn off the uh, the poly paint again. Enjoy. Mm, just let the eyes, just in case something is, you know, like when you have something selected and it goes all weird. Getting that bounce line again. I think I had three point point three four before. I uh, didn't really change much, but you know, I'm gonna render that. I just need to figure out a highlight, and I'm gonna begin from pulling. Uh, I hope it looks good. I'm always very anxious at this point, you know, whether or not the render is going to look good when I composite them. Quite a detailed model though. Spent quite a bit of time on this. Much better than my Marowak version that I did. <laughs> you can dig up that on my um, YouTube account if you're interested. Weird how you progress the more you do something. I tried to do pipes before on many occasions and they always looked really naff but I quite like these pipes on this character. They just look cool. Very simple. But that's usually what is a winner, you know, simplicity. Um uh, call this bounce right. Uh and last but not least is the highlight. So put that to the back. Getting about four point five split. <sighs> Quite pleased with that. Might probably more intensity in that. Yeah. And BPI render that. Let's see how it looks. And now we can jump into Photoshop. So I have a really itchy chin tonight. Itch was right near the microphone. Hmm, I'm really gutted about those panels behind his back. <laughs> that was like a really last minute thing as well. And I was like, man, these look awesome. Might do some like, um, ambient occlusion renders, you know, just the black and white so I can show them off it's nice can be quite dramatic on there as well, which is cool okay, just gonna get that out highlights and we're pretty much done so we're gonna go ahead and save this out as I had only just put the pipes in when I started this video, so crumble posed Wait for this to save. And now close down ZBrush and jump into Photoshop. This is probably going to be a really long video. Be on. 24 minutes, not bad. 
It's trying to take me about half an hour to complete this as well, so. Hey. Let's see what we've got. I've got to combine all these renders first so I can composite them simultaneously. And we'll see what people think. Might actually have to provide a picture of Gramble because it has changed from Gramble like ridiculously. You know, <laughs> it's really laggy. Oh fuck! <laughs> I, I hate pressing that. It's gonna open that stupid program. That has no function at all. Adobe Bridge, go away. I mean, why would they invent a program to help you open pictures? I mean, jeez, that was actually hard. Renders, back. I'm only going to pick the ones I'm going to use. For instance, I need that. I need my shadows, my highlights. Oh, I may as well just go over them all. If I just clicked one. Yeah, the lock is moon. Oh my god. Okay. Right. Uh let's render. We need this one. Uh, we need shadows in there. Highlight in there, mask in there, the depth in there, and the EO in there, and the bounce light as well. Okay, now I'm going to open my front view. I got the bounce light. Now, what I'm going to do now is make this about twice as big. Uh, I'm going to grab that bounce light and snap it in there. And I'm going to flatten the each layer. Um, so that's cool. I can hide that. Don't need you anymore, so I don't need the AO pass, which is you. And same again with the AO pass, just snap it in there and do that. Hide you. No, we need the depth, depth, and snap you up. I have to make sure I've snapped them properly, otherwise, it's going to be disastrous. Mask. Make sure I. Flatten down to the correct layer as well. Render. Where are you? Hmm. So I'm going to snap this one to a different one. That's right. Make a new layer out of this bottom one. And bring you. No, don't do that. Bring me down, snap him up, and just get rid of that bit we don't need. Make a new layer down here, grey background as usual. Um, shadows, hide you. Merge you down. And the last one is the highlight. Alright, awesome. Uh, now we can begin to composite these at the same time. I should have figured this out ages ago. <laughs> right, first thing I want to do is get this mask and put that in the alpha channel. Let's select you and inverse it. Get rid of that sh my layer, I don't need you. And just literally just delete the excess that we don't need uh, I swear did we have something that was overlapping or was that just a shadow 
Oh no. <laughs> oh no. What's not right? Ah, oh, fuck this big time. Is it just the mask that isn't in right? Let's just do something like that, see? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that's weird. Did it just not paste in correctly? Oh, I shit, I know why. <laughs> Let me just duplicate you. Where's this mask? Make him black. So I'm having a bit of a meltdown then. I thought something was catastrophically wrong. There we go. It's because I, the actual image wasn't all the way to the end, so it sort of like just pushed it forward. Inverse. And we're back on. Back on. Get rid of all this crap. Get rid of you. Oh, for Christ's sake. What is wrong with me? I forgot to inverse it this time. It is quite late. Right. A nasty edge on that. Yeah, I suppose I can remask it later on. Anyway, let me sharpen you. May as well sharpen them all. Listen here. Sharpen, 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 sharpen. Is that the yeah. Right. First thing I want to do is put the shadows in there. So I think it was. E Actually, we'll do this. AO pass. So it's multiply or darken. Uh, we go for the multiply moment. And we want as shadows. Which I'm going to go for darken. Which absolutely rapes the hell out of it. Hmm. The cool thing about having this though is that I can now play around with these different settings. Uh, you just want to sort of get everything set up first, and then start to play around with different, you know, versions of it. I mean, like, everything doesn't have to be spot on straight away. Um, what's this? That's a depth. We don't really need that yet. Uh, highlight. So that's a screen. You can see some of that coming through now. Uh, we're going to have to mask that out in a bit. Uh, bounce. We'll set out the screen as well. Let's see what that's giving us. Not an awful much. I'm going to play around with the levels of this bounce. Is that even bounce? Let's check this out. Hmm. I'm going to up the contrast of this, see what it gives us. Using Legacy, which is sort of like, makes it more black and white. It doesn't use the colour, in the colour, I guess it's spectrum. It's sort of just like it's from one value or not. Whereas if you turn that off, it takes into consideration the image that it is. You see how ridiculously brutal it is with this. Uh, oh no. What's this going to give us now? See if it makes it pop. See how I can roll it down a little bit. Definitely lights it up a little bit. Not sure if I like that yet. But for the highlight, I'm going to go ahead and do a layer um, layer mask. Hide all. 
and then I'm going to hit this black box we get and come in with a nice soft brush uh, yeah that's cool just put a bit of um, pen pressure on there as well uh, you know just start to put in some of these nice highlights that we had coming through Especially on these pipes. Yeah, the real mess. On them ears, and on this background arm, delts, end of his tail a little bit. No, yeah, that's silly. There would be a highlight down there. as rough as you like with it really yeah, complete control of all these highlights I never really highlight the uh, the background because that's what it should be, it shouldn't be a background it shouldn't stand out in any way as you want the people to be you know, looking at your model your work impressed with these pipes. Uh, I'm just going to come over here and do the same thing. Let's pick out some nice areas where we want to insinuate their detail and obviously for them to make sense in terms of how the light works. It's always a good idea. Get some of that nice dramatic lighting in there as well. Maybe not on his fingers as much. Down here. I think that might be a bit too much on his hand there. Yeah, that's nice. Get some on his chest, some of that bounced light coming through. Wow, that's really bad. Some highlights are just way too powerful, so. Yeah, if the, if it's sort of like really, um, you know, right, doesn't actually have any highlight information on the skull anyway, so maybe as well get rid of that. Right. Nah, we're we'll actually we'll probably highlight that. Though. You've just got to be really smart with it, you know. Think about how light works, you know, how it only travels in a straight line, but it does bounce, so obviously if there's an area really close, that's going to need highlighting, then go ahead and do that, but, you know, if there's stuff that's actually behind the light source, then, you know, it's not going to be highlighted. And I'm going to have a play around with the levels of this as well. I'm not sure if his lighting information is strong enough. But that maybe just because I've been working it long. Nah, that's terrible. That. Maybe if I play around with the contrast. I'm going to turn off Legacy, so I don't want to like, ruin what I've got. Let's 
legacy up as we do legacy. Makes you really powerful. No, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I really should do anything with the shadows. I'm quite satisfied with them. Uh, what else is this one? AO. I think for the AO, I'm just going to play around with contrast to see if that does anything interesting. Hmm. Let's play around. Play around the levels, see if that can do us anything. <laughs> Keep up now. Right, now this is an important bit, is the actual colour. Um, the actual colour thing, because you can have so much control over the colour. Uh, I'm going to actually play around with saturation a little bit. Uh, make it more saturated. More Pokemon like. And then I'm just going to play around with the levels. Levels are really powerful when it comes to this sort of thing. Just can really bring out, you know, it just looks so much more vibrant. Already, just from that one tweak, and that's the power of using Photoshop. I guess you can never really do this in ZBrush, you know, the different levels and stuff. But I'm going to drop the saturation a little bit. Never make stuff too saturated. Um, it just doesn't look very nice. I'm going to play around this contrast, give you that awesomeness. So what I like to do is just up the contrast, play around the levels and then desaturate it a little bit. So it keeps the punchiness of it, but it makes the colours um, just a bit more lifelike. Like nothing is, you know, I'd love to live in a really saturated world. I think it would be so nice to be, you know, our world's very bland, the colours are washed out and grey. We're actually just going to put in a new layer now. Uh, I'm going to put in this speculate on its uh, eyeball. Uh, let's get, get a nice hard brush. I think that's selected. I'm not too sure. Though. And not too fussed on where I put it. Just so you know, it just gives it a little bit. Hmm. Fade that in a little bit. Just give it that sort of, you know, shine on his eyes. Makes it look a bit more evil. Um, but you know, I'm getting quite happy with it, really. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Don't know what this bit here is. It's a bit naff. But that'll come. That'll get erased when you downsize it. Might erase that shadow a little bit. We just bring in a uh, new layer. But this time I'm going to go for reveal all, and I'm just going to use the uh, the X. Let me switch brushes. Uh, put a bit of transfer on there. Yeah, it just looks a bit weird with the uh, the shadow being right next to a highlight. So I'm just gonna find different areas where that's going on and just you know brush them out. Seems fine. 
Mm, what happens if I brush down my shadows and let nothing? Maybe sort of. Nah, let's leave. Maybe on his leg here. Make a bit more. No, it looks actually quite cool like it is. Uh, see if it's happening around here. Around the back of his head a little bit. Cheek. seems to be looking that's fine I'm going to save this PSD just in case everyone's changed anything and I will uh, that's saved and what I need to do now is uh, but first of all I need a, a flat version of this so I'm gonna hit control E press control A press copy undo that and bring it up to here. So I've got now a flat version of this, but I'm keeping all this information down here. Um, where I need this depth mask. Hmm. Now, probably going to run into the same. Uh, I know. Make a new layer, uh, fill it in with black, and just drop that in there as well, come to your alpha, drop that in and come back to here, select this layer, maybe it flattened and uh, just go to blur and lens blur and we want alpha 1 which is correct and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit I'm bring up the radius a little bit. a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see what that gives us. The lens blur changes everything, man. I don't know what it is about it, you know. It's gonna hit Control F as well to do that again. See if it gives us anything that interesting. It's kind of double up the effect. If you know what I mean. Just blurring the same things I've already been blurred. Uh, Usually ends up being too much though. Yeah. Keep it slow. Um, people don't want to look at blurred images, but I think that looks pretty cool. It just gives you that nice sort of SLR look, especially on this pipe here. Yeah, quite like that. Right. All that's left to do now is just bring this together. Uh, come here, come on. Let me just put a new layer. So I'm not getting that weirdness. <laughs> oh, what? Is that like. Did I not fill it in properly? Nah, fuck. Uh, it's probably because it's a different layer. Oh, that's why. There we go. You can get rid of. Okay. Where are the eyes? I'm just gonna actually, yeah. I'm just gonna actually delete all this. Uh, maybe not you. Okay. 
Okay. Um, that needs twisting around a little bit. It's a bit crooked. Might as well the other one. No, it's the back one actually. Uh, it's a bit better. Um, don't want them too close. I always like. I always prefer my back one to be over here. I think you read across from the, the left, or I do. So I just keep thinking that these fucking circle things are like off center. Let me get my eyes. So let me just bring down this measurement thing. Oh, no. I think that's done. It's good enough for me. Make them slightly smaller than the canvas. I'm just going to be doing that. Crop. Pull that one there, actually. Alright, now I just need to figure out what size I want this. I'm just going to play around with this, see what auto contrast is. Hmm, that's a problem with having no backgrounds. Actually, I can just plan it. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, auto contrast. It's pretty nice. Auto color? No. <laughs> Auto tone. Nah, I prefer the saturated version. Um hmm, let's just desaturate a little bit. Maybe sharpen, see what that does for us. Okay, I'm going to resize it to, um, what's that, 40%? Go for about 50, 60%, I reckon. That's cool. No. It's a bit over sharpened, isn't it? Uh, let's do a um, sharpen, uh, sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. sharpen. What sharpened edges do? That's pretty nice. Hmm. Sharpened edges seems to have sussed that out. Alright, we'll leave it at that. Scramble, done, composited. Scramble, compos, final. And we'll shoot line two in the ground ball folder. Um, save. Large file, please. Alright. Pretty much project done for ZBrushing. Um, just need to upload it to whatever now. And save this video out. Well, that's pretty much how I composite things as of right now. Um, don't take this as a lighting video. Um, tutorial because my lighting knowledge is very basic. Uh, I literally just use one highlight um, just to get you know give it that sort of niceness. Uh, if you want a lighting tutorial, I guess you know you search on YouTube or whatever. But that's pretty much how I've composited my things in ZBrush as of recently. Uh, I hope you find it useful. And next video will probably I think I'll probably have to 
retopologize everything uh, that I've done, and then um, yeah, I'm gonna have to build a sort of. I want him to be in like a rundown version of uh, like a poker center, and he's like um, just trashed the place. And he's like stood and all this like I don't know, just like maybe pipes going down from the ceiling, smoke coming out and stuff. All dramatic, but that'd be really awesome in UDK. So I want to do another scene. You know, I could do the scrub, have a camera like flying through all dramatically and stuff. So I think that'd be awesome for my portfolio. So that is the next goal for Grand Ball. But I'm also considering retopologizing that shark character that I did for the portfolio as well, and building like some sort of under underwater uh, scene in UDK, and just have him sort of there, just chilling out with all the fish and stuff. So I think that'd be pretty cool. It's an extra piece as well. So I'm just trying to get this portfolio finished, but because I'm so critical of my work now, it's taking extremely long to finish pieces of work, but I suppose it's worth it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much done.